What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again. Today we are talking about multiplying decimals. This is video four of our multiplying decimals playlist. Please check out videos one through three. It's a great intro into this video, um, not just for shortcuts, but to conceptually understanding what you're doing. Let's jump right in. So our objective today, today I will be able to multiply decimals by using the standard algorithm of multiplication. Today we're focused on the standard algorithm and how we can use that to find the products of decimals and whole numbers or just decimals and decimals, right? Last lesson we talked about how to find this with, uh, find products of decimals and whole numbers with an area model or a number line. And so we chose to think about this, again, this multiplication sign as groups of. So if I had two groups of three tenths, right? I'm gonna shade in my three tenths as best as I can. Okay. And if I had another group of that, right? So here's another group, again, maybe not filled in perfectly, but I'll do my best. All right, there we go. If I had two of those groups, I can see here that I have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, tenths shaded in. So my answer would be six tenths. If I chose to do it on a number line, right? So there's here's zero and one, it's split into uh, 10 equal pieces. So each of them will be worth a tenth, right? And I had started at zero and I had one group of three tenths and another group of three tenths. Again, my answer would be six tenths or 60 hundredths. So that's pretty easy when it's something like two groups, right? Or three groups. But if you have a hundred groups, you really don't want to be sitting here shading in a hundred groups of three tenths. This isn't even enough. Um, Area models, I couldn't even fit enough on the page, right? So if you want to do something like this, it's important that you understand how to do it using the standard algorithm. So let's look at our steps, right? Step number one, we want to estimate first, right? Anytime we're trying to find more multiplying decimals, we want to estimate. That's going to help us make sure that we put our decimal back in the right place later. Then we want to count the decimal places. So before you multiply, you want to count how many total decimal places you have. This is kind of a shortcut. Um, we're really going to focus on this right now. If you want to conceptually understand why this is happening with multiplying and dividing by powers of 10, um, you can check out another video on YouTube um, that, that we have to help you understand that. This is really kind of the shortcut, okay? Um, and number three, we're going to ignore the decimal. We're going to cross it out. We're going to multiply like normal, okay? And so I'll show you what I mean by that. And then at the end, you need to put the decimal back into your product and then check using your estimate that your answer is reasonable. So write these steps down and then let's look at how they can be implemented so we can understand them a little bit better. If I'm multiplying 12 groups of 2 and 3 tenths, right? First thing I want to do is I want to estimate. So I, that's going to be about 10. And then this is going to be about two. And so I think my answer, no matter where I get it, is going to be about 20. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line my, I'm gonna count my decimal places, right? So I have zero decimal places here. I have one decimal place here. So I'm gonna put this over there. Then I'm gonna cross out my decimal and I'm just gonna multiply 23 times 12, okay? And so what I like to say is we counted our decimal places, we set it, and forget it, right? Kind of like that old rotisserie chicken um, infomercial. But you can notice these are the same steps that are in our multiplying decimal song. So now I'm gonna multiply like normal. Six, four, cross out, add your zero and erase. I have nothing to erase. 10 times three is 30, which is on my threes here. 10 times 20, right, would be 200. And so my product of 23 and 12 is 276. The only problem is that can't be my answer because I wasn't multiplying 23. I was multiplying two and three tenths. I had one decimal place. And so there's two ways to know where to put your decimal back in. And I'll show you both of them. I'll write the answer over here again. The easy way, the shortcut really is to start with your decimal here, just like it'd be next to your ones place. And if you had one decimal place, you move it over one and your answer should be 27 and six tenths. The second way is to think about it using reasonableness. So I'm going to write this down, the same answer three different times. 
And if I estimated my answer to be about 20, if I put my decimal here after the ones place, that would might make my answer 276. That isn't reasonable. That's nowhere close to my answer. If I, first of all, I guess I should write this down correctly. There we go, 276. Even teachers make mistakes sometimes. If I put it all the way over here, right, that's going to be 276 thousandths. That actually means my, my whole number is zero. Zero is nowhere close to 20. So that wouldn't be reasonable either. I'm actually going to need another number right here. If I put my decimal in between the ones in the tenths place, my answer is 2 and 76 hundredths, which is closer than 276 to my estimate of 20, but still not very, not as reasonable as if you put it neck between your tens and your ones place and made your answer 27 and 6 tenths. Out of the four different places you could put your decimal, this is the most reasonable, which means you would put your decimal there. So if you're using the shortcut, you can count your decimal places and just move them back over. If you're thinking about this using reasonableness, you can think about where could I put my decimal to make it cl the closest to my estimate of 20. Both of them work. Neither one of them are wrong. It just depends on what your teacher would like you to do and what's going to further your understanding of mathematics. Let's check out this you try. Okay, so go ahead and estimate first. Write your estimated answer somewhere. And then count your decimal places. Cross out your decimal and just multiply these numbers like normal. And then you can either choose to use the shortcut of just moving your decimal back in the same amount of places you took out. Or you can think about reasonableness. I'll show you both when I go over it. So I know my estimate when I round that. That's going to be 0 times 0 because, again, you always go at least to the ones place. So my answer should be somewhere around 0, pretty close to 0. So now I have 1, 2, 3, 4 decimal places. So I'm going to set this, set it, and forget it. And then I'm going to cross out my decimal places. And I'm going to do 34, put my bigger factor on top, times 21. I'm going to go right to left, right, cross out, add your 0 because that's really a 20. So that's going to be 8 and 6. When I add these together, I have 714. Okay, And so I know that I have four decimal places I need to put back in. So I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3. Matter of fact, I'll even show you. 1, 2, 3. I need to go one more, which means I need to put my 0 here. So I know my answer is going to be 714 ten thousandths. That's really close to my, that's really close to zero, right? This is like having seven pennies and then 14, um, really hundreds of another penny, right? Which makes it 10 thousandths. Um, that's really close to having no money at all. Now, if I was to use my estimating skills, and sometimes this is where it gets a little tricky, I might think if I put my decimal here, that's pretty close to zero. And yeah, seven tenths is pretty close to zero, but it's more reasonable if you had to add the uh, decimal in your tenths place to make this a zero. That's why sometimes, not all the time, estimating can be a little difficult for that. Okay. Now, if you understand your rules of smaller than one, smaller than one, we'll give you a product less than both. That's another thing you can use. We're not teaching that here. That's a whole other video, okay? Um, so I suggest using the shortcut because it's easy. It works all the time. But estimating is a great strategy that will uh, show that you understand what you're really doing. Let's take a look at one more. Again, go ahead and pause it. You can estimate it, okay, and then see what your answer should be. Um, and then we will solve it. Again, going through the steps of counting your decimal places, setting and forgetting it crossing out your decimals, and then multiplying like normal. So I know, again, hopefully you just paused it, that my answer should be about zero because four or less, let it rest. Four or less, let it rest. Zero. I'm going to count my decimal places. I have one, two, three, four, five decimal places. And hopefully by now you understand what I mean by that is how many digits do you have after your decimal? I have five digits combined after my decimal. Now I'm going to cross out my decimals. And I'm just going to multiply like this, like typical, like normal, right? 356 times 24. 4 times 6 is 24. Carry your 2, circle it. 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2 is 22. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. 
I multiplied all my digits up top by my bottom factor one's place. So I'm going to cross out, add your zero, and erase. And then fix the numbers that you accidentally erased. Now, I added my zero because this is really a 20. So I'm going to go right to left still. 2 times 6 is 12. I regroup right here. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Two um, sorry, regroup again. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. Okay, And so now I'm going to add these together. And my answer is going to be 8,544, except that's nowhere close to my estimate, which means, oh yeah, I forgot to put my decimal back in. So I'm going to start here in my ones place. I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five decimal places, adding your zero. So I know my exact answer is going to be 8,544 tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundred thousands. 8,544 hundred thousands. And again, if you were just estimating, you'd have to think, okay, putting my decimal right there again a little bit difficult easier for the shortcut um, and again this is a shortcut where we haven't talked about how you're multiplying um, by powers of 10 and then dividing by powers of 10 to put your decimal in and out okay um, we're just counting our decimal places setting and forgetting it please check out our other video if you want to understand what why we're doing what we're doing and how it really works mathematically Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and this playlist. You've learned a little bit more about multiplying decimals and how we can estimate first to check for reasonableness, how we can do it with models, and for this video and um, lesson specifically, how to multiply decimals using the standard algorithm. Please check out our other videos on our uh, YouTube page, Instructor Beats Official. Please follow us on Instagram. Thank you so much for joining us and checking out our videos. Please subscribe. Uh, we really enjoyed having you with us. Um, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out!